So how do we measure fatigue? Um, fatigue, I think, is quite a challenging concept. Um, and we measure it in a number of different ways. So, so at the simplest level, we, we use a number of different questionnaires. Um, for example, asking people to record on a simple, what we call a visual analog scale, how much fatigue they're experiencing. And this means placing a mark on a line between no fatigue and extreme fatigue. We do a number of other things as well. We use some much more complex um, questionnaires to try and dissect the effects on different components of fatigue. And we also look at things like sleepiness or the propensity to fall asleep, which is often confused or, or conflated with fatigue. Uh, does fatigue have different components? Yes, it clearly does. And I think this is part of the challenge of working in the field of fatigue. For example, many people will describe, will mean different things by fatigue. So for example, a subjective feeling, a feeling of tiredness. Other people may describe fatigue when what they really mean is, is feelings of tiredness or feeling like they are sleepy. Other people will relate it to physical fatigue. So for example, an inability to perform motor actions in contrast to performing cognitive actions. So yes, fatigue has very many different components. And I think that is one of the real challenges of work in this field. Is there consensus in my field of psychoneuroimmunology? The answer is, Unfortunately, no. Um, there are a number of different ways of, of measuring fatigue. Um, for example, some of the, the methods I've just talked about uh, with questionnaires. But it's also known that the inflammation can change sleep propensity. So we know that inflammation can cause bits of the brain to enter a sleep-like state. So, so within my field in, in PNI research, there isn't a true consensus about how we measure fatigue. And again, this remains a, a big challenge for the field. Yes, I think this is an interesting question. Has too much emphasis been placed on, on fatigue in, in ME research? I think the answer perhaps is yes. However, the reason that I have tended to focus on fatigue is because we have a very nice potential model to look at how fatigue is represented within the brain. How is it that inflammation acts on the brain to change um, things like fatigue? One of the other issues within my field is that inflammation induces acute fatigue. However, um, there's been very little research looking at things like, for example, post-exertional malaise, um, which is um, another key feature in, in ME. So how do fatigue and post-exertional malaise relate to one another? And, and again, I think this is a very interesting question. Um, fatigue um, is, 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 is conceptualised as a subjective feeling, the feeling of fatigue also physiological fatigue, so for example, an inability to perform as, uh, as well or at such higher level because of fatigue of muscles, and also the related concept of tiredness, so sleep propensity. In contrast, post-exertional malaise is, is, if you like, a more complex phenomenon. The experience of, of many symptoms, including fatigue, after um, an exercise challenge or exertion sometimes of really quite mild exertion. So even though the two concepts relate together, they are somewhat different. However, at the moment, my research is really focused on fatigue itself with an aim of potentially in the future using what we know about that to try and understand post-exertional malaise.